Sunday school student. Ms. Bernice <coughs> has dedicated her time, her money, and her helpfulness. She has done so much for the Sunday school and so much for me. Like, Ms. Bernice took me to my first audition with the Hurrah Players, and, how, and now I'm in my second play. She took me on my Hurrah Camp field trip to the Outer Banks, and she has taught me many things about different religions, holidays, and their meanings. She has taught me how to meditate about chakras, and if you keep getting negative energy to one thing and positive energy to something else, the negative won't work, but the positive will. Most of all, she taught me to be peaceful. I am very grateful to Ms. Bernice for all these things. Thank you. Here is Ms. Bernice. Robbie introduced me last time, and she brought back this memory of the time that she asked me to babysit uh, Robbie, and I fell asleep on the kid Now, <laughs> before she got back. Now this time, uh, Abby reminds me of that field trip that she mentioned. It was an all-day trip with the Hurrah Players, where I got her down there, and we picked up the bus at 8.30 or something, and we got back 12. 30 that night. It was a trip to Manio, North Carolina, and we stopped on a pier or something. We had to walk. I had to walk Jockey's Ridge. I mean, the next day, I literally had to stay in bed all day. But I did it. So, good morning, everybody. Okay, my talk today is called Amazing Grace, because since I was a child, I've always heard uh, grandparents and elders say, grace is sufficient for me. And I used to wonder, why is grace sufficient for them? Well, I finally found out earlier this year, while I was participating in a 21-day meditation series with Oprah and Deepak Chopra. And the objective of the meditation was to show the participants how to create a life where all things were possible by manifesting grace through gratitude. Now, I wasn't motivated to do this series because I'm very grateful from before I get out of the bed, when I look out the window and I see the sun, I'm thanking God, even just for that, that I'm not blind, that I can see, until I go to bed at night. But I'm so glad that I did, because I finally learned why grace is sufficient, and it can enable us to create a life where all things are possible. So most of the talk will be taken from this um, meditation series that was called Path to Grace. Now, I was curious, I'm always curious about how many times something is mentioned in the Bible. So I went to my concordance to see the instances of where grace was mentioned. And I found that um, the Apostle Paul, there was a great a, a line in there where he was explaining how Jesus had said to the Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. And I go like, whoa, that's where they got it from. Now. According to the dictionary, grace is defined as a favor rendered voluntarily, or goodwill, kindness, love, or mercy. But in this meditation, I learned that grace is much, much more than that. Grace is benevolent, 
powerful, unwaving energy of the universe that guides us to the very best version of ourself. Grace is the nurturing quality in life and it is an intelligent energy. Now you might ask, where can I find grace? Well, God could not have made grace easier to find. The source of grace is within us. However, grace has to be manufactured through gratitude. So, when you shift into a state of gratitude and you see the, the glass says half full instead of half empty, as my friend Ruth did recently when she was reading a book called A Simple Act of Gratitude. She found that just being grateful for little things in her life made her happy. And she recalled how unknowingly that when she didn't know how to drive, she was bemoaning the fact that she didn't know how to drive and everywhere she went somebody had to take her. And then she switched gears and started being thankful that no matter where I have to go, I get a ride there. And voila, the universe, the intelligent energy of grace tailored that response to gratitude and supplied her needs. Because out of thin air, I get the thought, Ruth needs to know how to drive. She doesn't need to be ten, dependent on people to take her everywhere. And I will teach her to drive. <laughs> lordy, lordy, lordy. <laughs> what was I thinking? I didn't have a clue how to teach her how to drive. But I knew if it was to be, it was up to me. Because Everybody else was afraid to teach her because they were afraid that she would wreck the car, including her <laughs> husband. <laughs> but, <laughs> and now I would be lying if I didn't say that that was a big concern of mine as well. But these same old folks, they taught me, taught me how to walk in grace, step out on grace. So. I stepped out on faith, I mean, stepped out on faith. <laughs> stepped out on faith, and I knew that um, I've learned that you, in these seven, almost 74 years, that um, you attract what you fear. So I would not let her nor me entertain any fear thoughts. So before she drove off each day, we would call in our spirit guides, our guardian angels, God, any ascended one up there that could help us. We'd say the, prayer, the unity prayer protection, we'd put on our seatbelt and hit the road. And when we would pull back into her driveway safely, of course I would say, thank you God. <laughs> Through the grace of God, I taught her to drive, and she did not put a single scratch on the car, <laughs> and she passed the driver's test on the first try. <laughs> and, <laughs> I was as proud of her as I was when she told me that she finally believed in reincarnation. <laughs> now, and it's just that easy, folks. Just that easy. Now, like few Confucius, I believe that a picture is worth a thousand words, and I didn't get here in time to set up the easel for my 
graphic for grace being made manifest through gratitude. So I'm going to ask my friend, my buddy, Friesen, if he will come and stand up and be the human easel. <laughs> now, every time your feelings of gratitude go out into the universe, nature manifests grace through that gratitude. And it produces more things for you, gives you blessings and favors. So you got more things to be grateful for. So then you thank the universe for that. So nature manifests more grace. You got more things to be grateful for. Next thing you go, you got this perpetual flow of grace and goodness. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so next thing you know, you've got this life that, that is increasingly harmonious, happy, prosperous, enjoyable, and filled with loving relationships. How many of you would like a life like that? Me too. Now, nature is always ready to give to us and support us. We only have to open ourselves to her infinite abundance and connect with her. And gratitude is the way that we connect to nature's generosity and bring her support directly to us. And to make grace permanent in our lives, we need the, to um, establish gratitude as a habit so that it becomes our default mode relating to others and life circumstances. Now, my granddaughter that I married, uh, she's 26, she is a master at this. At that age, she already has a personal relationship with God. And she thanks him for everything. Now, some of you know that she was blessed to be one of uh, 600 students that was selected across the country to go on a cruise ship for a semester, like George's daughter was. And instead of going to your uni regular university that semester, you study whatever you would have studied on land, but you go out to sea and study. And um, you, in her instance, her cruise, she uh, visited 12 different countries in that one semester. And I mean, like, she went to Spain and Hong Kong and South Africa. Speaking of South Africa, Bishop Desmond Tutu was one of the lecturers on that cruise. So she's been lectured and had dinner and breakfast and meals with Desmond Tutu. What a blessing, what a blessing. Now, the first night of the cruise, the, um, she told me that the chef served her favorite meal, pork chops. <laughs> now most people would have been, oh, I'm lucky, but not Brandy. She was overjoyed. She calls God, my man God. And she went, my man God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And recently her fiance, um, bought her for her birthday uh, a trip to um, LA to visit a friend. She rented a little Kia, but when she got there, the Kia somehow wasn't available. So instead, the rental company put her up in this snazzy Mustang. Now, most people would have felt lucky, but Brandy felt grateful. And she went into her new version of gratitude, which goes, I'll try to do it like she does. Um, 
Thank you, universe. More, more. <laughs> uh, now, if you are not giving thanks when you're pulling into a crowded uh, parking lot and you find a parking spot at the door, and you're traveling on a trip and it rains in the night and it rains cats and dogs the entire trip, but miraculously, you get to your destination, it stops raining. Or you get out of the blue, you get this unexpected promotion. If you're not giving thanks, you begin to do so. And you will begin to be aware of more grace in your life as well. Now, grace shows up as being able to resolve problems easily, such as the time recently. Um, I was having, I downsized to a summer house, downsized to an apartment, and the maintenance people were hanging uh, pictures for me. One of the pictures didn't have um, the back on it that has the two screws on the side and the wires to go across, and you hang the picture on the nail. So the maintenance man improvised and he put a hanger in the center that was flat, level up top but serrated where you would put, put it on the nail or the hook. And no matter what we did, this picture would go <laughs> So I don't have a lot of patience I shouldn't say that because I do the kids, but for that kind of thing, you know, I just oh, it doesn't matter, just leave it. But I got like monk. It bothered me. The picture was over my bed, and it was a picture of Jesus. So I thought that wasn't right, you know. So, but I said I'll figure it out. And I go to sleep. Lo and behold, two o'clock, dead sleep. Something said. You know, you're never going to get that to hang straight on a serrated, a surrogated, you know, bottom. You know, you need a different kind of hook. So that was the kind of thing where grace helps you to resolve problems. Or, to come an instance, of, let's say your granddaughter um, is ready to go to college. She's applied to four colleges and all four colleges accepts her, and one of them gives her a full paid scholarship, or you receive an unexpected bonus, or you walk under a ladder and you don't get bad luck. I'm just kidding about that, just kidding about that. <laughs> but you get my drift, I hope, I hope. Now, every moment of our life is a unique gift. As we awaken to the special value of that gift, the gift of now, when we step up in grace, we've got to remember that the power is in the present moment. And as we practice gratitude, our perspective expands. And we can see that we're being supported by the generosity of the universe in endless ways. Uh, I recall one of those ways earlier this year when I had to uh, buy a new car. Now, I would rather drink muddy water or sleep in a hollow log than have to hassle with the dealership over what price am I going to pay for their overpriced car. But I had to do it. So I, I had selected Paul Honda because a childhood friend of my grandson was starting out as a salesman there. And I wanted to help him. But he helped me. Well, we both helped each other, but I did not expect help. My intention was to help him with the sale. But he helped me. 
So you know how you've you got you picked your car, you go in the room, and the sales manager come in. You got to put on your bargaining hat and get ready to you know make this deal. <laughs> he, the sales manager, you know, shelves the paper to me like this is what this car will cost you, and I look. And he had reduced the cars, the sticker price, $2,000 because Casey said I was his grandmother. <laughs> 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 and he had, had given me trade in value that was more than Blue Book, book. and the car had mechanical problems and it was worth less than Blue Book. But it wasn't a lie. Now, technically, the child, he considers me his grandmother, okay? Now, all of the kids coming up, when my grandkids were coming up, my house was a hangout because I wanted to know where my grandkids were. So my house was a hangout. So they could come by after school. Oh, I'd have 10, 15 kids and they're hanging out. And I supplied juice, unlimited juice, sodas, chips, candy, snacks, you name it. So, and they all call me Graham. My, my grandkids call me Graham. They all call me Graham. So I thought that was the universe paying me back for all those cookies and snacks. <laughs> <laughs> now, operating with an attitude of gratitude has always brought a flow of these kinds of um, blessings to me. And every moment of gratitude makes us healthy as well. Because grati uh, gratitude is more than an attitude or a mood. It is a powerful input to our mind-body system that leads to increased physical and psychological well-being. Grateful thoughts don't just stay in your mind. I want you to listen to this and trust me, I'm not making this up, okay? When grateful thoughts have messenger molecules that instantly transmit their effects to your body, like adrenaline, you know, like when you exercise or something and adrenaline does what it's supposed to do. Well, grateful thoughts transmit instantly the whatever effect that they're supposed to have to the 100 trillion cells in your body, creating new brain cells, new pathways, New brain patterns. Wow. Now, the, at, the practice of gratitude has even been found to change our gene expression in a positive direction. I mentioned that gratitude makes our relationships more harmonious, and that is because if you are able to shift from seeing all of the negativity in your partner. For instance, you are such a slob. You get on my nerve the way you're dropping your dirty clothes all over everywhere. It's disgusting. Instead, if you can focus more on the good things and that good feeling when you get, like when he brings you breakfast and bed. See? <laughs> what that does, those feelings, like I said, they, they'll instantly, you'll get this beneficial biochemical and neurological change. And it will expand your heart, which has the effect of erasing old grievances and soothing resentment and petty differences that you may have between you, thus uplifting the relationship. Now, 
Another amazing thing about um, gratitude is that it gives the same benefits to the giver of gratitude as it does to the receiver. So the receiver has generated in them the same biochemical and psychological and heart changes and that's what raises the relationship. Now, am I off track? Let's see. All right. Gratitude awakens the true self and your true self is always peaceful and graceful. And if we go beyond our changing personalities, our egos, to connect with our essential self, we contact the ever-present grace that is within us. Now, our true self is peaceful, intelligent, powerful, and intimately involved in every wish and dream. Our true self has the creative power and intelligence to direct and manifest our lives. When we step into and practice with life in this level, we will always be grateful and find grace everywhere. We will be urged to take deep breaths and become aware of the many blessings that are tied to a single deep breath. Now one of the coolest things that I like about gratitude is that um, if you keep gratitude flowing in your heart, you can change your world without lifting a finger. Now, since the greedy merchants have been shoving Christmas down our throats since October 1st, trying to get us to buy everything in sight, I'm sure you all are well aware that it is the Christmas season. And that is why I have on this bright red suit and I wore this gaudy ring <laughs> because I love Christmas. It is my favorite holiday. But I have grown increasingly concerned about the commercialization of Christmas and how the real reason for the season has been pushed in the background. So I was thinking about it every, I've been teaching Sunday school a few years, and every child, bar none, when I ask them, why do we celebrate Christmas? They get animated, their eyes get big, and they said, because Santa Claus comes, <laughs> okay. and that's okay. <laughs> Now, my two grandchildren uh, have been, well, they live with me all their life, but when they were 9 and 12, um, their mother died. So I was taking care of them, and a couple of years, a few years after that, I really had it up to here with the commercialization of Christmas, and I decided that I was mad as H-E-double-L, -L, and I wasn't doing it anymore, the commercialized way. So I announced to the grandkids, to my family and my friends, that going forward, <clears throat> I would no longer be giving Christmas gifts because it was Jesus' birthday, not theirs. <laughs> now, of course, everybody thought that I was like, Chris Van Cleve, a Scrooge. <laughs> but nevertheless, I mean, that was my con conviction. I wasn't doing this anymore. So I thought that the grandkids handled it uh, well. I mean, they didn't stomp up the stairs, go to their room, slam the door. They didn't rush to the phone to call social services. I mean, like, none of that, okay? So I thought it was okay. My poor thing, I mean, they must have been in shock. And now as adults, 26 and 29, they tell me that they were totally, absolutely 
traumatized when, <laughs> when, when friends would ask them what they got for Christmas, they had to say, nothing. And then they, they would just apologize, like they say, my grandmother doesn't believe in Christmas. <laughs> Nobody got it, you know. I believe in Christmas, but I just believe that it is the birth of Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less, and that's the way I intended to say. But I do feel badly now that they tell me. <laughs> but this act of bravery has allowed me to have wonderful Christmases where I don't have to worry about what I'm going to buy, who, and getting it wrapped, and paying for it, you know, all of that, none of that. I have that time, that period of Advent to just reflect on the awe, the wonder, you know, of, of Christmas and the grace of God for giving us this wonderful gift, this baby that was born to die on a cross for the sins of the world. And um, I would like, you know, it's sort of like, sort of like you're shopping for somebody or present, extra stressful present, and you shop, shop, and you finally find just like the perfect thing. It's priced twice as much as you would have paid for it, but you get it anyway. You give the gift to them, and they look at it, and they just go, thanks. You know, you know, not really thanking you at all. I don't want us to be like that about the gift of Jesus. So right now, I want us to just take a minute, and on my count of three, I want us all to say, Thank you, God, for Jesus. Okay, I'm on 12. And a one, and a two, and a three. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Well done. Now, I would like to end with something that came through uh, Sean Dixon a little, not too long ago, around Thanksgiving time. And it's called Divine Gratitude. Creator of all that is, we enter your sacred presence to give that gratitude for our blessings. Gratitude that we embody as soul gifts. The gifts of soul that have developed and continue to evolve in our existence as we journey back to the light of creation. Gratitude for opening our hearts to become compassionate beings of love and forgiveness to live in the oneness. Gratitude for knowing that we are each an aspect of the energy of creation. Gratitude that we carry the sacred flame of existence in our heart, the sacred flame that is an aspect of creation. Gratitude for the gift of free will, that we may use that free will to consciously surrender to divine will and return to creation. Gratitude for the consciousness to awaken and surrender to divine will. Gratitude for living in the flow of divine will. Gratitude for the joy of being divine. So be it, so be it, amen. <laughs>